Hello everyone. On today's video, we're going to be looking at a kind of interesting topic. It's one of those things that everybody hears about all the time, but you never really go into too much detail with. And that is what they call the OODA loop. That refers to how quickly a particular system can respond to a detected threat. So to demonstrate this today, uh, the first thing I want to do is I actually want to kind of show you what the OODA loop is going to look like inside of the database. And then we're going to test it against a real scenario using the SAM simulator to see just how fast I can respond. Again, I consider myself to be pretty quick at that particular system. And we'll compare it again to the actual speeds of a regular command. So let's go check it out. So first things first, if you open up any database entry, in this case, I have the S75 Divina. This is the DE model. This is the fancy PVO only version. I actually really like this version because it gives you a little bit more control over the missile. You'll notice that it's got your typical sets of sensors. You've got a couple of missiles, including the nuclear version of the SA-2. I think that's a little cheap, but hey, whatever. And if you go to the tippy top of a database entry, you're gonna get this thing called the OODA cycle. That reserves refers to observing, orienting, deciding, and acting. This is your reaction time between the moment you've detected something in the moment you are able to engage something. Now, the interesting thing is after you've already passed through this 15 seconds of, hey, I found something. Let me point my missiles at it. Let me think about it if I want to shoot and uh, let me start the targeting process. It then takes this much time in order to actually launch a weapon at the particular target. So remember, I have to do this first, which takes 15 seconds. Then I have to do this, which is going to take a varied amount of time, depending on what type of system it is, as well as how good my gun crew is. So let's experiment with that real quick in view so you can see. So I've got myself my uh, good old fashioned S75 just kind of parked here. You can see it's just sitting there, nothing too, too exciting going on. I've turned on the battalion style radar. We're sitting up here at the Ashulik test range, which is uh, basically where they try these things out. I'm going to go ahead and unpause real quick. And I immediately have detected a few different targets. So the first one I've got is I got this weird bogey, uh, bogey number two. It's well within my attack range here. And we also have this bogey number one, which is way the heck over here. So now I have detected both of these targets. So the clock has now started at exactly this time. So now what I want to do is I want to use my SAM crew, and I'm going to order them to attack this target. Keep in mind, in the real world, you have to worry about things such as, uh, well, I want to go ahead and engage it. You know, I have to identify it. I have to know whose team it is and all that other stuff. What you'll notice at the top of my system here is that I have a 36-second delay. That 36 seconds is a combination of multiple factors. Remember here, it takes me 15 seconds after I see something to decide what I want to do with it. Then it's going to take me another 36 seconds to go ahead and actually launch a weapon at it. So even though I've called up an attack on this one, remember we started our scenario at exactly 10.01 here, it's going to take me nearly a minute before I'm able to engage that particular target. So again, time's clicking, time's clicking, we're 35 seconds in, I still have not launched. There's my first weapon. So you can see I've now launched two missiles off that. That doesn't quite look right when you scale it like that, but whatever, it's all good. So you can see now that after the or targeting cycle has completed, I'm now able to go ahead and engage the target directly. Now, if I didn't order up a manual attack and I just had them do this completely automated, I'd have to take all this time to actually identify this thing in order to go ahead and shoot at it. In this case, I chose a TIP-63, which is an aerostat. It's actually kind of a neat, it's just basically a balloon with a radar on it. But again, I wanted to uh, simulate this pretty accurately. Now, you'll notice that it took, like I said, about 45 seconds, which is a combination of the targeting time plus the I've detected and acted time. So again, if I click on this one more time and I go pop it up, you can see I have my 15 and then I added my 36. So it took me about 50 seconds between the moment that I spotted the target and the moment I was able to engage with a manual engagement. Man, this balloon takes a lot of pepper. Meanwhile, we have this bogey, who's uh, sitting way the heck out here in kind of a nowhere man's land. But the interesting thing here is my 15 second time to go ahead and target and orient and decide has already expired which means that the moment he is in range, I will have already had enough time to not only decide if I'm going to attack, but have also had enough time to decide that I want to go ahead and fire a weapon at them. Meaning the moment that this particular character gets into range, I will automatically engage that particular target. That is a massive difference. So let me go ahead and I'll lock onto him real quickly. Go ahead and I'll fire three because I'm, you know, wasting missiles here. Now notice that whereas the other missile took about 45 seconds before I could safely get a weapon on the way, this one is going to take a significantly shorter amount of time once it enters into our attack range here. Keep in mind, our battalion radar is not exactly the most precise, and we're going to see that as a problem later on. So I'm just going to let him kind of enter into our attack range here. It's getting close. It's getting close. Enters into the attack range. Uh, the reason we have not fired yet 
It is not because of my OODA loop limitation. It is now because the weapon is not inside the DLZ, which is just the dynamic launch zone. You'll see that. But notice, I was able to fire the millisecond I was in range because I had detected that target so much earlier than the previous target. So that time had already expired per target. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And it means if somebody ducks behind a mountain, as long as I'm able to identify it as the exact same contact, that was pretty garbage. As long as I'm able to identify it as the exact same contact, I can still reliably engage it without having to deal with that 45 second wait time. So now you're probably going, hey, that's actually good to know. That means as long as I spot a target, I don't have to wait to fire at it. Yes, and that's the most important thing to take away from this video today. But what I wanted to explore a little bit today is the firing time. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reset our scenario here real quickly. Sam, we'll go back to it, pretty straightforward. Now, if you remember, I started my scenario at exactly 7.01, and uh, it took me about 50 seconds before a single missile left the rail. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and pop over to Sam Simulator and try this exact scenario in exactly the same way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create myself a handy dandy radar reflector balloon. There's your shoe loop sign. And I'm gonna get myself an SA2. The reason I'm giving myself a 30 second delay is because I wanna simulate how long it's gonna take me to identify. More importantly, I have to make sure my missiles are gonna be ready to go. So let's go ahead and fire it up and see what happens here. Give it just a second. Okay, begin. Remember, go ahead and turn my volume down so I don't deafen all of you. We're gonna turn on this one. We're gonna turn on this one. I only need three missiles. Go ahead and flip it to BP. Go ahead and pop all my arming switches to master mode. And remember, let's go pop over to my battalion radar, grab the handy dandy handle, and let's see how long it really takes for a SAM crew to actually identify and engage. Now, one thing I do like to do is I usually like to shut those little lines off because I find them absolutely blinding. But again, do whatever works for you. No, nothing so far. I'm just kind of chilling. I'm the battalion radar guy. So if you ever wonder why it takes so long for you to get a target update, it's because it takes time for that radar to physically move. Whoa, we got something. All right, the timer is going. I'm going to immediately orient the radar. Go ahead and get me the radar transmitter turned on. Again, I'm an experienced crew. There's the target. I'm going to go ahead and lock it this way. Rotate it this way just a little bit. Go ahead and lock it this way. We need to go ahead and get it in range next. There we go. Let's get it in range. Range is set. Switch TT. Missile away. Now notice, I never took the time to actually determine what kind of target it was. I just launched as soon as I saw it. So my reaction time here, while insanely good, is limited by the fact that in the real world, we have no idea what I just shot at. <laughs> so we can go flip on the little TV, and you can watch my little missile spiraling. Now, one of the problems here is I can't identify what the heck I just shot at here. I just know it's up there somewhere. Let's go ahead and speed up time a little bit here. This is gonna be one heck of an aggressive shot. You can see my missiles are actually following the path of the radar here. It's about three nautical miles away. Pretty clean shot here, pretty clean shot. Now let's see what happens. And I think that's gonna go right into his front windshield. Oh no! So in this case, we fired way outside of the effective range of the weapon. So even though my firing time is actually extremely quick, we wasn't able to actually to reliably go ahead, and I've actually just lost it over here. So we're gonna have to fake another shot here. So if you ever wonder why it's like, you know, 45% chance of hitting a target, you just saw it happen yourself. What I really should do too is I should change my radar mode here and get myself a little bit more reliable shot here. And kaboom. Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha. Okay, so you can see from this example that I was able to reliably hit a target that we had plenty of plenty and plenty and plenty of time to actually reliably acquire here. So you could see my total reaction time from the moment I detected it to the moment I had launched was basically squat. You're talking seconds here. So let's go ahead and open up my actual scenario here and see just how quickly I was able to get a shot off like that. This is one of the neat tricks with this particular program is that after you go ahead and open it up, you can actually save an after action report. So I'll get myself some Google Earth here. Go ahead and get myself my little file explorer. I'm gonna go scoot, scoot over to my uh, back drive here. And where's the most recent one from today? Ah, that looks good to me. And we're gonna do that, boop. All right, let's take a look what I did here. Okay, so they said it took about 54 seconds to reliably get a shot off here. Let's see how I can do. Hey, there's a Zuluk. All right, let's see what happens here. All righty. So, bu -bu 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 -bu. go ahead and make him disappear. Remember, uh, we're, he appears 30 seconds in. So he appears right 
Let's see here. He's going to appear right... No, actually, he started in the air. So we had to acquire him the old-fashioned way. Okay, that's fine. So our scenario starts at uh, 7 o'clock and 31 seconds. Remember the fact that nothing really happened until... Yeah, okay, so this makes sense now. So he appeared 30 seconds into the scenario here. So we have fast-forward time here. This is uh, 10 seconds. Again, our total detection-oriented side act time. We've gone up to 15 seconds. Again, that's how long it took them inside of the actual scenario in order to complete the OODA loop. Now we begin the targeting cycle. We get ourselves to about 7.01. So the total time between the moment he appeared in the sky and could be detected and was launched at was exactly 30 seconds. If you remember over inside of the simulator itself, or I should say in command, you'll notice it took us about 50 seconds. So even though I am definitely quicker than command, there was no time here to actually go ahead and do any analysis of the IFF or anything like that. And you can see when the missiles ran out of energy, that was actually a pretty sloppy shot on my part. Good. So you can see that even though I was that fast, it still takes a pretty hefty amount of time between identifying, locking, simulating, moving, getting the targets, and getting everything all lined up. Hence why the OODA loops seem to be as long as they are. So I'll go ahead and close Google here. This is actually a pretty slick demonstration. Go ahead and close this one. Go ahead and fire back up command here so you can kind of get a feel for that. Now, the interesting thing is this you've seen what this thing looks like inside when we're trying to target those particular guys at such a quick amount of time. Now, why are the modern systems so much quicker? That's because a lot of the targeting is done automatically. You simply make the decision of whether or not you want to fire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get my everybody's favorite. We'll get a PMU this time. Facility, we'll do S300, PMU. We want the upgraded version. Um, that looks good to me. I'll get the Iran version. Do, do, do. We're going to go ahead and open this one up, fire up the active radar. Now, take a look at the OODA loop here. Ha, <laughs> look at this. So it still takes 15 seconds to go ahead and engage. However, the targeting cycle, watch this, is a staggering six seconds. So it is faster to target, but the detection still takes 15 seconds. So let's go ahead and uh, flip on our radar here just to demonstrate my point. So, um, okay, we started at 7 o'clock. We've targeted two targets. We're going to go ahead and lock on both of those. Um, we'll fire three of these here. We'll grab this other bogey. We'll do three of these here. And we'll go ahead and unpause. So again, the clock, remember, we started at 7.01. We detected the targets. Uh, 7 o'clock, I should say. We detected the targets one second later. It is now pushing 15 seconds. Remember, we're still in the OODA loop cycle. And we have already launched. Not only have we launched, but we've launched three missiles at each target in the time it took me over here to actually completely lock onto the guy, calculate the range, and fire the missiles. Now, keep in mind, this is mostly automated. This was manual. This requires a good crew of five or six in order to reliably use. You saw me do it individually. And notice my lethality here is uh, pretty darn effective, as you can see very, very clearly here. All right, so hopefully this helps uh, people kind of realize, you know, why are these things take so darn long and which to launch and all those other good stuff. Oh, apparently we needed a couple more, but the SA2 got in on it. <laughs> I always feel lonely when these guys don't get a freebie. All right, hopefully this video has been interesting. Again, I just want to kind of show you what's going on. And uh, the general tip here is if you're on the offense and you're trying not to get engaged by either of these systems, remember, the moment anything on that side detects you, you now have a total of 15 seconds, in which case you are immune because they're trying to decide whether or not they want to shoot at you. After that, for this particular unit, the modern system, it takes six seconds before they fire at you. For this kind of classic system, which is still trying to work over that SAM site over there, it takes a much, much longer, staggering 36 seconds to actually target you. All right, uh, other than that, now again, this is kind of a neat topic. This is relevant for all weapons in this game. So if you're sitting there in an F-14, you're trying to engage a bunch of incoming missiles, remember, it still takes that same chunk of time in order to act. Enjoy.